Well, I know some of you are probably one, uh, surprised that I'm still here right now. You know we're expecting our third baby at any time, and I actually thought it was going to happen uh, two weeks ago, a week or so ago, and then on Thursday it was like they were coming, uh, coming really fast, and then I got home and everything stopped. <laughs> and so then I just said, okay, well, let's wait, and then I'm waiting. Am I going to preach this Sunday? What's going to happen? And then I'm up here testing the microphones at 7 o'clock this morning, and she calls me, and she says, it's baby time. I said, what? And she goes, just kidding. I said, <laughs> oh, gosh. Don't do that to me. <laughs> so I'm still here. <laughs> she was here at 930 with the boys. Everything, you know, we're hanging in there. So, but this is the third, third Sunday in Advent, second Sunday in a row that we talk about John the Baptist here. And remember, different Gospels have different purposes, right? So if last week's John uh, from the Gospel of Mark was the baptizer of repentance and forgiveness, then this week's John from the Gospel of John is not the baptizer but the witness, the one who points to someone other than himself. And he's very clear about that. You heard that in the reading several times. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. We know from the Old Testament that God's name is I Am, right? That's the ancient name. Well, three times in this passage we heard John say, I am not, right? <laughs> I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. I am not the prophet. All of those things. So this gospel is about being a witness and pointing to God's word that is made flesh again in our world and again and again to us even here as we now wait again. So I thought about that witness and thought, what does that witness look like for us in our lives? Because today in our world, religion is often seen as something that's private, something that you don't talk about. And well, I really don't have an option for that with, with my livelihood. I was in the gym talking to this woman who's been coming to several of my classes and I've been getting her to come to different things. And finally the question came up, so what do you do <laughs> that you're able to be here at 9.45 on a Tuesday? <laughs> And I don't, I don't hide it, I don't try to hide it, I want to hide it, but even as I say the word P -p -p pastor, right, like I, I hold back because I'm like, oh, what kind of reaction am I going to get from this, right? There's something about that as, as the truth about us becomes public that are we, how do we feel about that? <laughs> are we always confident with that? So I, th I, I thought about that, I realized... Uh, Molly, intern Molly's been doing my Wednesday at Wendy's Bible study, and she told me that uh, a couple weeks ago, somebody who was just sitting in Wendy's went out to their car, got their Bible, and came and sat down with them and did Bible study for the 45 minutes. I said, this is that, that's why I'm there, and that's why our group has been there, to be a witness in, in public in, in, an, in a new way. Because here's the thing, that life is about witnessing to the presence of God that came and was very public in this world for everyone to see in the person of Jesus Christ. To make real and tangible for people God's promises, that those promises would be real and tangible for people in this world. So that all the world would know that God is changing things here. Witness is public, and it should be public. Witness is also certain. John says in the passage, he says, I'm the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the path or the way of our Lord. So what does that witness look like for us in our world? What's that voice? What is that wilderness that we, that we live with? Well, I think we could just say that that voice is a voice who points to those who struggle and those who suffer in our world. That this, that's the voice of Isaiah that we read from, that Roger read from the Old Testament. That that voice of Isaiah is one who gives voice to the brokenhearted. To those who live with guilt or shame. To those who are captive to their own circumstances in this life. Whether it be debt, whether it be addiction, whatever it is. To those who are mourning, to those who are anxious. That we give voice to those, vo to those individuals. So to witness and to point to that certain promise is to say that God will restore this world because of the covenant, because of the promise. God will also pour out onto us everything we will need to be able to do that and accomplish 
in this world. The world tells us over and over again that you're going to need to buy this or to achieve that amount of status in order to feel truly secure with yourself. But the truth of God's promise, dear people, is that certainty and hope are something given free of charge. And the grace and love of God shown to this world in Christ. That's where we have confidence and certainty in that grace. The other thing I thought about witness is that it points to someone other than yourself. Right? <clears throat> I guess I thought of it this way. We're still waiting for this baby to come in our house. And there's something different about this third one than the other two. Number one, the, the other two were more in the summer, so this is different, right? Christmas time is different. But there also seemed to, sp the first two, I think I was spending more time getting things ready that I, that I needed, that I was going to need, right? Right now, I don't need to put a crib together. It's already there. I don't need more baby clothes. I've got plenty of those, especially for boys. I'm good. I don't need to baby-proof the house. It, it doesn't work anyway. <laughs> so it's the, all of these things. And so this Advent season has been renewed for me in a sense that, yes, in the th themes of waiting and hoping, absolutely, being awake, being alert, you bet I am, right? But now I'm kind of in this new way where Advent, being prepared is not about getting the stuff ready anymore. It's not about even getting stuff ready for Christmas, having all our packages ready or our stockings hung by the chimney with care. Like that's not what it's about. Being prepared this time around has nothing to do with stuff at all. But there's this move that's now coming and it's pointing me now to three instead of two. And I'm thinking, am I ready for this, right? It's, there's a mental, do, do I have enough stamina? Am I girded up? Am I mentally ready for this? Am I prepared within myself for this one who is coming after me? <laughs> this one who, I might not have to untie sandals, but I'm going to be tying shoes for a while, safe to say, right? But... Folks, we spend hours and hours in our culture getting stuff ready for Christmas, making sure we have the right stuff and everything is in its right, rightful place. But John's kind of witness in Advent carries a humility, is about making yourself ready to point to one who is more important than yourself, to care for someone other than yourself, to point to something greater than just you alone. That, that's the witness of Advent. To point to the one who is greater than us. To point to the God who came in the manger in Christ to be vulnerable as an infant. To live our life, to struggle like our life, to die our death, to show God's love for each and every person in this world. So that perhaps when we care for the other beyond ourself, when we defend the vulnerable, or when we help the fallen, or we care for the hurting, when we take up one of those blue homeless bags to hold on, to give to someone that we see in the world, that as we care for the other in that way, we touch this Christ made vulnerable. We see the Christ on the cross in one another, and that, when we proclaim with John the Baptist, the very next line in this gospel was, as there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's what John pointed to in this gospel. And that's what we are called to witness to, to a God of promise who will pour out this spirit in this world that will give us what we need to change this world, to mend our broken hearts, and to let us live in the light of hope. May we be that witness, now and always. In Jesus' name.